I think their intent was I am looking for innovative new products because my clients are asking for innovative new products. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside virtually my co-host, Beth Popniklov, and we've got a guest today, a very good friend of mine. He's a part of our team, Steve Coffey. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here today. Yeah, excited to have you on. For those of you that don't know Steve, he is our director of growth. He is joining Beth in Orlando. We're coming at you live from live. IBS yeah. 2022. We typically do an IBS episode every year. Last year we didn't do it because it was virtual. So the, this is the first one we've done in like two years. And there's a lot of topics people have in mind. A number of manufacturers we know that have backed out of the show that did not go. And so we wanted to talk about what we're seeing. I'm going to be sending Beth and Steve some quick fire questions. Is that the right word? Quick fire? Yeah. yeah. Rapid fire. We'll go. We rapid can go. We can go. We can go quick yeah. and we can do rapid, right? <laughs> <laughs> rapid fire questions about the show. Um, so let's dive in. Sound good? Sounds great. Let's do it. Great. So obviously we haven't had a show or a serious show in like two years because of the pandemic. Things have opened up. And um, IBS, KBiz said, hey, we're going to have the show this year. It's going to be in Orlando. You both are there. The big question that I know is on people's minds is what is the show like? Are people even there? Like <laughs> what's the attendance like? How many booths are there? Is it about the same? What's different? Can you quickly break it down for me? I love trade shows. They're exciting. Uh, I love the exchange. I love the uh, the excitement of new relationships blossoming as, as cheesy as that may sound. Uh, it's fascinating to me. The, the establishment of new relationships and the exchange of business is, is just very exciting. So when COVID happened, that all just went away. Uh, and a lot of companies completely readjusted. Um, some of those companies went full on into digital. Some of those companies just stopped. Once things began to pick back up, there was a lot of uncertainty what the future of trade shows would be. Um, this last IBS, however, uh, gives me a lot of um, confidence that trade shows are here to, to stick around. I think there's been a new normal that's been established and things were kind of back to normal. It was crowded. It was busy. Um, people were coming into booze. Manufacturers were talking to builders. It was exciting. So it's, it's actually um, pretty cool to see. Yeah, I would say a lot of what Steve is saying, I, and I echo all of that. The sense that I've had from any, every manufacturer or builder that I've talked to is just pure excitement. There's a significant positivity in the air. I mean, it was packed. I had one of the manufacturers that I spoke to said they heard there were 68,000 attendees. There was that many. Yeah. Yeah. And it felt, I mean, you felt it there. Now, part of the reason you felt it is because the way that they've laid it out, it's a scaled down show. It's not sprawled out or all four concourses. So there's a reason that you can feel 68,000 people in a room, but it was 68,000 people having really good, positive conversations. I mean, there was the air was like electric with energy and excitement. It genuinely felt great. I would say on the other end of the spectrum, first of all, there's blank spots for booths, which you never would have seen in 2019, where a manufacturer registered and then pulled out at the last minute or sparsely like decorated booth spaces by manufacturers who maybe had a shipping problem or, you know, hedged really hard. And that would be the other thing I would say is there's not a lot of flashbang. There's not a lot of we, you know, held our guns until IBS 2022 and then came out really big with this giant product launch or this really innovative thing. There's a lot of rinse and repeat booths from 2019, but that's to be expected, right? Like that that's okay. I don't think anybody knew what to expect, but it does seem like, especially from the pro side, if they were going to attend a show, especially coming on the heels of really poor reviews from CES, really poor attendance at uh, trade shows, like IRE was really poor the last couple of times from, that's anecdotal, I wasn't there, but that's what I've heard from manufacturers who were exhibiting. And to see it here and just the general excitement and buy-in to trade shows again was really, really cool. I love hearing that. That's a lot more people than I thought were going to attend. 
us too. And, and that's, that's what everybody said. said. There was a uh, standing room only in some of the booths, actually. So I'd walk walk into the booth, and then very quickly it would just be you, you'd had to uh, shoulder to shoulder. That's really cool. Um, what are trends you're seeing? You know, obviously builders are there, but builders are busier than ever. And so that really begs the question of like, well, what were they looking for in going to the show? Like what were the things that, that brought them to the show other than they want to see Mickey Mouse <laughs> in Orlando? I'm kidding. But like, what, what was it about the show that that brought them there? Or are there things you heard from builders that you're like, Hey, I'm either a trying to just continue to build relationships or I'm looking for these kind of products or is there anything anecdotally you can provide? and share with our listeners about what you've seen from builders. Uh, so Beth, I'm interested to hear your uh, thinking on this, but I actually talked to a lot of builders and contractors, um, general contractors. It was some really good conversations on the show floor. Uh, and I would just ping them with questions. You know, wh what are you here for? What are you, what are you looking at? Walk me through your process of walking into a manufacturer's booth. What's your first question? Uh, so I, it, really interesting. Uh, things that came up. The first was availability. They were they were concerned about availability. They're saying, "Hey, what what's going to be my lead time?" Um, I've never heard that you know, before. Based on yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, you know that's going to be the question, but it's it's a legitimate concern. Uh, the other um, concern that they had obviously was labor, right? So they were interested in new products, which is very interesting to me, because they were coming to the show. Uh, walking in and saying, what new products do you have? What innovations do you have? Uh, but then the first the first uh, question would be, what problems are my guys going to have installing this, right? Um, skilled labor is a big concern. So I think uh, I was talking to one builder and um, he said that recently he had a, a, an electrical um, portion of his project go out almost four to five months because three separate electrical teams had COVID, and so they they did wow. not have the uh, the team to be able to do the to to do the work. So he couldn't find anybody to do it, and it just stretched the project out that long. Uh, so for him, it's a really big concern. If there's a you know particular product that's new, uh, they're going to have a, a a little bit of a learning phase. That's what he was interested in. He wanted to go into the booth to see the product, to pick around at it, um, and to ask those questions. I think another um, problem that they have or or, or concern that they have is uh, inflation and pricing. Um, I just read this morning, uh, you know, inflation in January was 7.5%, uh, which is, which and is a that's big jump. Reported. That's reported. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's a big jump. So, it, you know, the, the contractor and, and the builder, they're walking into the booth and saying, Hey, what's going to happen with pricing? Um, which I didn't, I didn't think they would be asking or be interested in, but they're, they're talking to the sales reps in the booth about that. Um, the other thing is, is COVID. Uh, I think that's still a, a very big concern. How is that impacting the company? How, you know, are are you able to manufacture? Are you are you doing those things? Um, now, I think the other uh, interesting fact that was um, a common denominator between all the builders was they were looking for innovation, which is something I never heard mm. before. But they brought up that term. They said, "What's that? What's that mean, though?" It, it. Saying I'm looking for innovation is like saying I'm looking for technology. Like, <laughs> like what does that what, what does that mean? Exactly. So I, I think their intent was I am looking for innovative new products because my clients are asking for innovative new products. I like um, that. Architects are interested in it. My my clients, the end user, they're looking for new new um, new products that are interesting and they're going to make me look good. I think that's that's what they're interested in. Fascinating. Right, that's good. Yeah. I like that. I could add to that, Steve. I talked to a GC out of Nashville. And he said exactly that. Essentially what his, I asked him like, what are you doing here? You know, what's bringing you and what do you hope to get out of it? And his response was our population growth is exploding, but our lumber dealer and dealer distribution networks have not caught up to the demand for innovative solutions, for innovative products, for sustainability, for high-end products. And so I'm here sourcing those products. He's planning to create pull through at the distribution level and go back to his dealers and distributors and request specific manufacturing brands be brought into their distribution network so that they, he can better service his clients. Oh, I, lo I love that. I know. I thought he, that that was incredible. I mean, that's like, I mean, that pull, I mean, we've heard about that pull through before, but the fact that he's being so blatant about it, 
and saying, I'm, go I'm going to my dealers and distributors and telling them, hey, I need these manufacturers. Like that's a, that's a manufacturer's dream. You know, yeah, it literally is. I was, uh, yeah, yeah, I should, I should have handed his business card out to some booths and be like, you need to find this guy. Find He's this gonna make guy. it happen. Yeah. yeah, that's great. All right, Beth. So talk to me about marketing. Who did a good job? What did you like about what they did? You are a fanatic for messaging and messaging that's on point. And so I'm really curious to hear, like, who did you, as you're walking through the, the show floor, like who stood out to you? Yeah. So messaging is the number one thing that I'm looking for when I look, walk into a booth. What do you think that your customer wants to hear from you? And what, what are you trying to leave with them as they walk away? And someone who does this very well, but I think even this year did, they outdid themselves was Sherwin Williams. Their booth was all about problem, solution, problem, solution. Like this is the solution that we have. Don't even worry about it. We've got you and not about them, not about they're the leader, you know, we do this many gallons of paint per year or we're on this many houses, but it was all about their customer. One of the things that they did that's really smart is their key message on their booth was a call to action. Ask you, how Sherwin Williams. So the the key message on the side, and I, so I've, we have a picture of it, I'll include it in the show notes, but their key message that was biggest and boldest says, ask Sherwin Williams how to exceed homeowner expectations with every gallon. They were starting a conversation, That's good. That's good. calling visitors to action with a solution, not like ask us how you know great we are, but like, how do we solve this problem? And I thought that that was really smart. To that point, Beth, I think asking that question before the, they even go into the booth, you're prompting conversation and you're getting, you're, you're inviting them into the booth because you understand them. And just even from what I was saying about what builders were concerned about, that was extremely important for builders this year is, does this company care about me, right? And my problems and my concerns. So I, I it very, it spoke very, very well to that. Yeah, I would just say on the flip side, I would say there's still a good amount of booths that are, have, I mean, if I'm honest, like pretty generic messaging, you know, we're sustainable, we're, you know, we're sustainable, we're durable, we're innovative. None of those words mean anything. And they could be applied to any product category. I saw them on, you know, booths in just about every product category, to be honest. But so is part of that due to manufacturers hedging? Sure. But that's also a chronic issue with booths in general is the messaging really falls down. I think people freak out about the amount of space that they have tech to put text on and they just can't figure out what's going to be the most impactful so they put too much or maybe even too little let's make the logo bigger that's right <laughs> <laughs> we'll make, make the screen sense. bigger what other things did you see that was interesting like anything else that stood out to you guys so i i am attracted to booths that have a really good coffee bar uh so that pulled me into <laughs> a lot of booths but uh i i thought um uh, the, the Trex booth actually did a really good job of inviting me into the booth. And I, 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 I look at that and I watch for that because um, you really have to do that to this audience, right? Invite them into the booth. They had a little campfire set up and a little, it was fake obviously, but they had a little campfire and a little um, communal area where you could kind of go and hang out. I also, I walk through a booth um, first time, I'll just walk through it. I'll walk right through the middle of it slowly looking around and I want to see how I'm approached, right? So for sure when Williams they invited me in with that question, uh, when I walk through, I want to feel like I've connected with somebody. I want to feel like somebody's connected and say, Hey, how can I help you? Or what are you interested in? Um, so I, I think, uh, for Trex, that was something that was uh, a, a big deal, uh, for me is that they, they were very, uh, communicative, right? They, they really asked a question and they were, they, they cared about me. So that, that was really important to me. All right. So last question here for you both. What predictions do you guys have for Trace's moving forward? Based on what you've seen, based on what you know, what do you think 2023 or even the rest of 2022 looks like? With several manufacturers, I actually had a conversation about that. I said, what, what, are, you, um, what, are, you, what are you looking to do with, with trade shows in the future? Uh, my conversations in the latter end of 2020 and in 2021, uh, they were all saying, yeah, there's really nobody here at these shows. So sales reps just standing in booths, right? Just standing around waiting for somebody to come by. There were some shows that were busier than others. Uh, the conversation changed a little bit this this past week. 
whereas it wasn't so much, yeah, I, you know, we're not sure if we're going to be here. Or we're going to have a smaller booth. We're going to slim down a little bit. Uh, the conversation was, yeah, we're, we're in full, full force. The thing that changed was, yes, we want to be at trade shows, but we want to make sure that the, the interaction that they have with us here matches our online presence. Something I've never heard manufacturers oh, directly say. Uh, so they, they were interested in their, their digital presence matching the experience or the messaging that they, they had in the booth. However good or, or, or you know, poor it was, that was, a, that was a concern for the manufacturer. Uh, there was one builder that I talked to and he said, yeah, I'll, I'll walk into a booth and I will not let them scan my badge uh, unless I'm really interested in the product because I, I don't want to get bombarded with emails that I don't care about. A, a, a really important thing that I walked away from the show with was the fact that companies are, they may push forward into trade shows. I don't think they're going away. Uh, I think you will see trade shows busier from now on uh, as we've accepted the, the new normal that we have. But companies are going to be focusing and appropriating more budget to the digital experience that they have post trade show. Uh, you know, the success, the extent to the success that they see, I think it's going to be really important to make sure that the experiential marketing that you have, how they're interacting with the product, how they're be becoming a part of the brand when they're in the booth and feeling it and touching it, transfers very effectively uh, in the merging of sales and marketing. So the conversation that they have with a sales rep needs to mirror the marketing automation you know, campaign that they put into after they walk out of the booth. What that conversation will be post follow up, uh, as well as the interaction that they, they have with the tools on the website is extremely important because you, the, the one thing that the, the builder said, uh, or all the builders that I talked to, because I asked them, I said, will you go to the website? after you after you visit the show and they said oh of course we will like mm -hmm. if i'm interested in the product that's going to be my first step oftentimes before they get the email from the rep right um so it, to me that's that's a, a big transition is that yes companies are pushing forward into more trade shows 2023 i think is going to be busy but companies are starting to realize there's a little bit more to the experience that that this builder has with me outside of just that trade show yeah well they've been trained over the last few years you know, like that's how I interact with manufacturers. Yeah. So it's just, it's a very smart play. Um, Beth, any, any takeaways from you? I would say this felt like the springboard into next year. I don't think anybody thought this was going to be the trade show to change the trajectory of their business. I think we were all here feeling it out. Are we, are we even all willing to be in a room with 68,000 people again? I mean, after spending two years in isolation, I say that number out loud and I'm like, makes me a little nervous. So I think I would expect big things in Vegas next year. I think the companies that were here that saw the desire from the pro community for mm. trade shows are going to invest even bigger. And the companies who missed it, I think, you know, the companies with the blank spots, I think they're going to get feedback that says like, hey, we, you know, we made a call for safety and there's never, that's never the wrong decision to err on the side of caution, but we're going to have to be there next year. I also think there's been a moratorium on complaints about trade shows. If we think about 2018, 2019 and like January, 2020, before 2020 became what we know it to be now, we talked long we talked often about our trade shows dying. Is this really worth multi-million dollar investments from individual companies if your sales cycle on the leads that you get from trade shows is 12 to 18 months? And mm. I think that conversation is still relevant. And I, I predict that we'll get back to that conversation in two years. Next year, people are going to be really excited. Give us two years back to normalcy when we start to take things for granted again. And we might then I think we'll start to see innovation. But in the meantime, I agree with what you're saying, Steve, and it connects really well with what we've been saying for the last year is the move away from brick and mortar, e-commerce, retail, but it's all commerce. Jack, Zach, you said really well, builders and pros are now trained that the number one way that I find information about manufacturers is from your website. Mm -hmm. And just the fact that I saw you at a trade show doesn't negate that. It actually encourages that. So if you have a weak website, if you have weak messaging on your website, if your website is confusing and clunky or incomplete or not mobile friendly, I mean, all of those things are going to hinder your ability to have ROI from a trade show. And I think that's as it should be. It should be one and all, not either or. Love that. 
our listeners, I hope you all got some good insight. If you didn't attend the show, even if you did, really curious to get your takes as well. Please send us a note if there's anything you saw at podcast at venvio.com. If you enjoyed this content, and you want to get more of it, simply go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe and get more. Until next time, I am Zach Williams alongside Beth Pop Nikolov and our good friend Steve Coffee. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.